Abby Williams and Libby German were murdered while hiking in 2017 in an infamous crime we know as the Delphi murders. And years after the case went cold, this man, Richard Allen, stands accused of killing the two teens. Now, there have been a few significant updates in this case in the past few weeks, and more are on the horizon. So I want to catch you up on how we got here, what's happening now, and why authorities believe there are still men out there who were involved in these murders who have yet to be caught. Last week, a January 2024 court date was set for the Delphi murder trial, and a trove of investigative materials and documents are being released right now. Now, unlike a lot of stories that I've covered, this one really stands out because the suspect has confessed to the killings, not once, not twice, but five or six times. And the confessions are not up for debate either. At a recent hearing, both the prosecution and the defense admitted that Allen has incriminated himself in the crimes. Prosecutors in Delphi, Indiana, told the judge that Allen confessed five or six times and made those multiple confessions to multiple people. And what is wild is that Allen's own attorney concurred. Now, he didn't use the word confession, but agreed that his client has, quote, made incriminating statements implicating himself in the crime. So why doesn't he just plead guilty and get sentenced? Well, despite acknowledging that the confessions happened, Allen's lawyers claimed that those confessions can't be trusted. The defense pointed out during a recent hearing that Richard Allen has been inconsistent in his recollections over the years and that it's getting worse because his physical and mental state is deteriorating at a fast clip. Now, I can't speak to his mental state. I've never interviewed him and I am not a mental health professional, but anybody with eyes can see a drastic change in his physical condition. This is his mugshot from when he was arrested in October of 2022. That's less than a year ago. And this is what he looked like in court this month for a bail hearing. He looks like he's aged years. He's gaunt, he's frail, and according to Box 29, the bulletproof vest he was wearing into court was retrofitted to shock him, like a shock collar, if he got out of line. Now, the defense is arguing that their client has been subject to harsher treatment in prison than other inmates, and that is evidenced by his dramatically different appearance and demeanor. However, the DA put witnesses on the stand like the prison warden who testified that Allen is being treated just like any other person incarcerated in the facility. Now, as of this video, he was denied bail and will remain in prison until his trial next year. Let's go back to how Richard Allen got arrested to begin with and the tragedy that started it all. Richard Matthew Allen was arrested October 2022 on two counts of murder for the killings of 13-year-old Abigail Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German. The Delphi murders gripped the nation since the bodies of these two innocent girls were found on February 14th, Valentine's Day, 2017. Now, the day before, Abby and Libby didn't have school, so Libby's older sister, Kelsey, dropped them off at a popular nearby hiking trail to walk around a little before 2 p.m. It was during their hike that the girls would be abducted and killed. Now, as of this recording, we still don't know how Abby and Libby died. Police have not released their cause of death. But like I said, there are a ton of documents being released this week. So by the time you see this, that may have changed. Before the girls were killed, they managed to capture a video recording of a man on their Snapchat story, a man who cops believe to be their killer. Now he became known as Bridge Guy. This video was taken at 2.13 PM and it would mark the last time the victims were seen alive. If you're at all familiar with the story, you have no doubt seen this photo. Police only released a blurry screenshot of Bridge Guy taken from the video, as well as some really haunting audio. And this proved to be central to their investigation. It's hard to tell much from the shot. It looks like an older white male, average height, little stocky, jeans, a dark blue or black jacket, and a hat. You really cannot see his face. And here's the audio. Take a listen. Guys. 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 The voice there was saying, guys, down the hill. The thought process from an investigative standpoint was that someone would recognize that voice and come forward. The bodies of the girls were found 0.2 miles away from Manon Bridge, where we first saw Bridge Guy. And it really isn't a bridge at all. You can see it behind me right here. It's just a set of abandoned raised railroad tracks located at the end of a hiking trail. Shortly after the murders, law enforcement also released a composite sketch of the suspect based on witness accounts. The sketch, the screenshot, the audio recording all generated thousands of tips from the public. But despite these leads, the case remained unsolved and it left this small Indiana community shattered. Then years after the case had seemingly gone cold in April of 2019, a significant breakthrough occurred. 
a new sketch of the suspect. This one right here was released by law enforcement. It's a pretty significant change from that original composite. Law enforcement also revealed previously undisclosed audio and video evidence. And just like in 2017, the new info renewed interest in the case and in came a surge of new tips, but no arrests. In the probable cause affidavit, cops go into more detail about Libby's Snapchat video. Bridge guy is seen following behind the girls as they walked on the bridge, and one of them mentions the word gun. It is after one of the girls utters that word gun that bridge guy says the now infamous down the hill comment. And the video captures the victims doing what they were told and walking down the hill before cutting off. We don't know a lot about how the victims' bodies were found. Police have said the crime scene was very bloody. Some of the girls' clothing was found in a different location than their bodies, a bit further south in a creek, and that a 40 caliber unspent round was discovered on the ground between Libby and Abby. It was through that unspent round that investigators were able to connect Richard Allen to the crime. Several witnesses who were hiking that day talked to police about seeing a man who fit the description of Bridge Guy, who cops, of course, are now convinced is Richard Allen. Sometime after the last known sighting of Abby and Libby, one eyewitness saw a man believed to be Bridge Guy, quote, muddy and bloody and looking like he had gotten into a fight. Richard Allen had actually been interviewed by authorities way back then in 2017 as part of the initial investigation. And he admitted to cops that he had been on the bridge that day, but said he had never met Abby and Libby. And he wasn't spoken to again until 2022. And by that time, police had good reason to believe that he was Bridge Guy and they executed a search warrant on his home. The search turned up a 40 caliber handgun and ballistics revealed that the unspent 40 caliber round found between the bodies of the two victims had been cycled through that very weapon. At this point, Allen was cooperative with police and voluntarily came in for another interview. And he swore that his gun was never used by anyone else or out of his possession. And when they asked if he could explain how that unspent round was cycled through his gun, he couldn't. Now he was arrested shortly after that conversation. But the story doesn't end there. In December of last year, Daily Mail exclusively broke the story that Abby and Libby's deaths may have been part of a larger criminal conspiracy. The Carroll County prosecutor has said in the past that he doesn't believe that Richard Allen is the only person involved in these killings. And sources close to the investigation told Daily Mail that there are at least two other men believed to be involved and that Abby and Libby died as the result of a botched kidnapping to traffic the girls into a sex ring. This guy, Keegan Klein, is, according to our sources, working with police on the Delphi murder case in order to lessen his outstanding child pornography charges. And our source said, the girls met Keegan Klein online and he arranged to meet them that day, but didn't go. Instead, he set them up to be kidnapped for the porn ring. The victims are believed to have been killed right off that hiking trail and then moved to a different location nearby, which happened to be on this man's property. This is Ron Logan. Cops looked into him, but never named him formally a suspect in the case because he had an alibi at the time. But it turns out, that alibi is a total fabrication. According to an FBI search warrant, a cousin of his provided a false alibi for him and then cell phone records placed Logan in the vicinity of the killings. Interestingly, our sources have said that Logan has a connection to both Richard Allen and Keegan Klein. The theory here is that Allen was to abduct the girls and bring them to Logan's property, but that something went wrong in the process. But even if prosecutors can prove Logan's involvement in the slayings, there won't be any charges because he died last year. For the time being, nothing has been filed against Keegan Klein either. Despite the prosecutor believing that more men were involved in the deaths of Libby and Abby, there has not been enough probable cause to make another arrest. Justice rests in the trial of Richard Allen. As he awaits for his day in court, his team is requesting he be moved to a different housing facility for better care. The judge has yet to rule on that transfer request, but we will keep you posted. For more true crime content like this, hit like and subscribe.